Many critical systems use Kafka to reduce network latency, as Kafka helps us adopt a truly event-driven architecture. But things can go wrong many times. Imagine you're building a financial transactions application and you've set up Kafka, your producers are pushing data, your consumers are pulling it, and everything looks like it's working just fine. Now, what happens if a producer crashes mid-send? Does that mean the events will not be read by the consumer and never processed? And this can lead to serious issues if you're working with payments. That means the producer never gets the acknowledgement that the consumer sent and doesn't know what to do next. What if a message gets delivered twice? Does that mean that it gets processed by the consumer multiple times? This can be serious in the context of financial transactions because that means money getting spent twice. This will also lead to data inconsistency issues. And the worst case, the event was delivered not at all. This can lead to availability issues and churned users and eventually loss of revenue because users then switch to another payment application that's just more stable. Now, depending on the application that you're building, like a payment app or a social media app, you can use any of the different delivery semantics provided by Kafka. Delivery semantics define the guarantees Kafka makes around how a message is delivered and whether it might be lost or duplicated along the way. And depending on how your system is configured and how critical your data is, you'll want to choose the right delivery semantic. You can choose at most once, which is fast but risky. You can choose at least once, which is durable, but it can lead to duplicates. Or you could use exactly once, which is the gold standard, but it's way more complex. In this video, we'll break down what each of these means, when to use them, and how to configure Kafka to get the guarantees you need. So as we discussed, there are three delivery semantics. So the first one is at most once, where messages may be lost, but they're never duplicated. The producer sends a message without waiting for acknowledgement. And if there's a failure during transmission, the message is lost. This is the fastest, but also the least reliable. So you can use this when low latency matters more than perfect delivery. So for example, logging, telemetry, where it's okay if there's some loss. So some loss is acceptable. For at least once, messages are never lost, but they might be duplicated. The producer waits for an acknowledgement from the broker. And if the acknowledgement is delayed or lost, the producer may retry, causing duplicates. And on the consumer side, if processing fails after committing the offset, data is lost. If the consumer processes before committing, failure may lead to reprocessing the same message. You can use this when durability is critical and duplicates are acceptable like auditing, alerting systems, and so on. Exactly once. Now, this is the gold standard. And you should not use this all the time because this is very heavy uh, in terms of processing. Let me first take you through this, OK? Messages are delivered once and only once. No loss, no duplication. So this requires idempotent producer, transactions across producer, broker, consumer, and Kafka version 0.11 plus, and careful configurations. Internally, it uses idempotent producer to prevent duplicates during retries, transactional rights for atomicity, producer sends and con consumer commits in a transaction. And you should use this when data must be processed once and only once, like in banking systems, billing, or stateful stream processing, like Kafka Streams or Flink. Okay? Now, we have a quick background about all these three, but now let's dig, dig down deeper into all three, one by one. So this is what at most one delivery looks like. So this is your, T is your topic, Kafka topic. P is your producer, C is your consumer. Now what at most once says that the message will be delivered at most once. So we are prioritizing speed and reducing latency. That's the priority here. We may lose the message and that's completely all right. And this is great for uh, non-critical systems like logging, telemetry data, and real-time metrics where occasional loss is acceptable. That's where you would use it. So the guarantee is that the message will be delivered zero or at one time, but never more than once. The risk is messages may be lost and will never reach the consumer. How does it work internally? So the producer sends a message to the Kafka topic. It does not wait for an acknowledgement from Kafka before moving on. So there's no acknowledgement. There's no wait for an acknowledgement. So you don't block anything, you just keep going. So there's a failure during transmission or if Kafka does not receive the message properly, the producer does not retry. This eliminates duplication, but also introduces the risk of message loss. So how consumers experience it is messages are received only if the initial delivery succeeds, 
No retrial logic is involved from the producer's side. The consumer processes only what makes it through. No duplicates, but possible gaps. It is best used when you can tolerate some message loss but want to avoid duplicate data, and you prioritize low latency and high throughput over reliability. Now, the one that I use the most is at least once delivery, and if I'm using some kind of, of a payment system, then I would use exactly once delivery. Now, the best part here is that you're not learning right now from someone who is just preparing for some interview, but you're learning from someone who actually works with Kafka on a daily basis. So I can tell you that these two ones are the ones that are most, most used. At most once is only used if you're doing some kind of logging. But mostly, in 90% of the cases, when you're building an application, you would be using at least once delivery. Okay. So here you send out uh, the same message, you try, retry it multiple times. This is the producer, consumer, this is the topic. And the same message might be received multiple times with the consumer, so it can lead to duplicates. And this is used in systems where duplicates is completely fine, which is like 90% of the systems, right? Only with payments and only with financial transactions, you wouldn't want uh, duplicates. So at least once delivery, the guarantee is that the message will be delivered at least once, but it may be delivered multiple times due to retries. And the risk here is possible duplicate messages in the consumer, which is completely all right. How does it work internally? Producer sends a message to a Kafka topic. Kafka acknowledges the message only after storing it in a partition. If Kafka does not send an acknowledgement back to the producer, which is due to a failure, network issue, or timeout, the producer retries sending the message. This retry can cause duplicate messages because the original message might have been already stored, but Kafka did not acknowledge it. And for something like at least once delivery, how would a consumer handle these duplicates? Because we are acknowledging that yes, there will be duplicate messages that the consumer is receiving, and that's completely all right. And they, it, there can be a little bit of slight inconsistency in the system, and that's completely all right. So here what you're saying is consumers store the offsets. Now offsets are like index numbers of the messages that they have processed. If a consumer reprocesses an old message, that means if a message, if a consumer had already received a message, you're sending a message, same similar message to it again, um, due, due to your failure, it should have something called as a deduplication logic, which is you can store messages by ID in a database, which is a deduplication logic. That means that you don't end up storing the same message again. This is best used when, when some duplicate processing is acceptable, which is 90% of the systems. You, you're completely fine with duplicate processing. And you prioritize faster performance over strict deduplication. Okay. Use cases, log collection, monitoring, real-time analytics, and any type of other system that you're building, like a social media application, e-commerce, all of that, this is, this is completely fine. But there are some points, some, some areas in an e-commerce application where you wouldn't want at least once delivery, where you would want um, only an exactly once delivery. That's to do with payments and orders, right? That's where you'd want only one. Um, uh, so this right, is used in uh, some parts of some softwares. And uh, this is like very heavy on the processors, like I mentioned. Uh, but let's let's go through it exactly once delivery. Producer, consumer, and topic, and you get a guaranteed once message delivery to the consumer. So the guarantee here is that the message will be processed exactly once with no duplicates. More overhead due to additional coordination and processing will be there. That's the risk. And how does it work internally? So Kafka achieves exactly once semantics using item latency and transactions. So Producer side, item latency. So Kafka assigns a P PID to every producer session. Each message sent by the producer has a unique sequence number. If Kafka sees a duplicate sequence number, it just ignores the duplicate message. And this ensures that Kafka never stores duplicate messages from a producer. Okay, so what we're trying to do is eliminate duplicacy from the producer side as well as the consumer side. On the producer side, we're using item potency, and the consumer side, we'll use transactions. Kafka groups messages into your transaction on the consumer side. The transaction is committed atomically. So I'm assuming you already know about atomicity and asset transactions. If not, I will have a video coming up soon about it. So either all the messages are processed or none are. That's how atomic transactions work. So if the consumer crashes midway, Kafka ensures the same set of messages is not reprocessed. How do consumers handle exactly once? So Kafka maintains transactional offsets inside an internal topic, which is consumer offsets. If a consumer crashes, it resumes from a clean, consistent state, preventing duplicate processing. It's best when you use this semantic only when data consistency is extremely critical, something like financial transactions, billing, or event-driven applications. Here, 
The duplicate processing must be avoided at all costs. That's what you're doing with exactly once delivery. But like I mentioned, it has a lot of overhead due to additional coordination and processing. There's a lot of additional coordination and processing going on that leads to a lot of um, overheads. So this was all about Kafka delivery semantics. Now I want to talk to you about something important. My engineering leadership cohort is coming up on June 1st and we'll be learning system design, cloud architecture, data architecture, and all of the other awesome advanced things that you need to learn if you want to transition into an engineering leadership role. So there's a form in the description of this video. There's a link, click on the link, fill up the form if you're interested, and we'll take things forward. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.